Hi, welcome back to another video. One of the coolest things about ghosts is that they are transparent. You can see through them. But that effect is really hard to replicate in your decorations. You may have seen my packing tape ghost video, which does a really good job of making a transparent ghost. But in today's video, we're gonna go even better. We're gonna make a ghost out of chicken wire. And my goal with this is to show you how simple it can be to make a ghost out of chicken wire. Now it's not super easy, but it really isn't as hard as you might imagine. So let's get started and I'll show you how easy it can be. We only need a few things for this project. First of all, of course, is the chicken wire. So this is 36 inches by 25 feet. Um, by the end of this project, I will have only used about half of it. Then I've also got some extra wire here to help bind things together. And uh, the only tools we need are some wire cutters and needle nose pliers are useful. And these are great because they have wire cutters built in. So if you have these, this could be the only ones you need. Uh, also, you definitely want safety goggles and uh, you're gonna need a lot of band-aids, trust me, no matter how safe you are. Uh, chicken wire scratches you like crazy. If you've never used chicken wire before, when you first open it up, you'll notice that it has this wire that is wrapped all the way around it and keeping it together. What you wanna do is find that in the middle somewhere and snip it with the wire cutters and that'll loosen it up. Now you, this is one of the reasons you want to be sure to be wearing safety goggles because that wire will just spring out and could easily poke you in the eye. Now you're just going to unwrap it all and actually I saved this wire because just like I mentioned you need the extra wire. Uh, I actually was able to do most of this project just by using this extra wire as the wire to tie things together. And now you just unroll as much as you need. Now, as I show you the process here, it's kind of hard to see exactly what I'm doing. And so I'm gonna show you a little bit of it, bit of it using paper first so that you know uh, what my intentions are. So if I take a rectangle of paper and I roll it into a tube, you get a nice even cylinder. But if you roll it unevenly, one side a little bit further than the other, and it's at an angle, then what you get is a kind of cone shape with a smaller bottom and a wider top. So that's what we're gonna do first. I'm gonna cut out a rectangle that is about three feet wide. For safety sake at the factory, they fold over the first six inches or so, and we're just gonna cut that off also. But if you look at the cut end, where I cut it, it's all of these sharp little points. Uh, they're very useful, but also they're dangerous. These are the things that are gonna scratch you. Just like with the paper example, if we were to put the two sides together, then this would make an even cylinder. But we want kind of an angled one, so we're gonna overlap it at an angle. Uh, the easiest way I've found to do this is to start on the short end and just bend the wires over just to kind of hold it in place there. And we're actually gonna leave the whole rest of it loose for a little bit. Uh, I only need the cylinder to be about 18 inches long, so I measure that out and we're gonna cut that down. And now we'll make sure that it's overlapped unevenly and start bending the pieces over to hold it together. But if we look inside, there's a whole loose end inside, so we need to solidify that also. So we'll push it up and bend those sides over too. And this will give us an even surface on the inside as well as the outside. And now we've got our kind of cone-shaped cylinder, and we're gonna squash it flat in one direction. This is gonna be the torso. We're gonna make the joint area where the sides are connected to be the back of the torso. You can see we're skinnier from the side and wider from the front. This part is the rib cage, so we're gonna measure from the bottom about 12 inches. 
And then what we'll do is cut along either side, just one cut about six or seven inches or from the 12 inch point up. And then we're going to cut horizontal two wires in uh, both to the left and to the right of the bottom of that cut. This will make it simpler to roll over to create the shoulders. Now with the single horizontal cut it wasn't quite enough so I decided to add additional horizontal cuts along each side of the vertical cuts about every two inches. This allows it to roll over quite easily. So I roll over one side, then roll the other side over top of it, and wire it all together. And now we've got the rib cage and the top of the shoulders. To make the head, it's useful to have something that you can bend the wire around. Now you might have something like this, a hairdressing mannequin head, or maybe a styrofoam head form. But if you don't have either of those, uh, you can also use something, an everyday item, like a small ball. We'll start with a rectangle of wire, and we're going to wrap it around the ball and figure out how big it needs to be, and then we'll just trim it to length. After wiring the seam together, we're going to put the ball back in and we're going to cut several seams from one end down to the ball, about six or seven inches long. This will allow us to fold the edges over on top of the ball. And so these will each be about three inches wide or so. Cut them, push them over. And then we wire them all together and we'll have a nice round top to our cylinder. Now we've got to remove the ball and uh, we're going to do the same thing on the other end. This is for the bottom of the head, so along the jawline. So it's okay for this to be a little bit more angular than the top. We're going to cut some strips. We're going to make sure our head is about seven or eight inches tall. And we'll just fold these strips over similarly to what we did uh, the first time, but this time we don't have a ball to push against. And as we fold them over, uh, we may need to trim them to size or trim them shorter, and that's perfectly fine. Now we'll kind of squish it flat uh, from one angle just so that it's kind of oblong, like a head should be. And you can kind of see uh, how the head and the rib cage are going to fit together. For the neck, I'm going to make a small cylinder. Uh, it's longer than it needs to be. Once we wire it together, then I'm going to cut the top at an angle so the head can be bowed. Then we'll just wire the head to the angled side and the straight side will hook to the top of the rib cage. And now you can see it's starting to look like a person. Let's work on the arms. For the arms, I'm going to start with 
uh, some rectangles that are the full three feet wide by about 12 inches. Uh, to find the length of the upper arm, we're going to position it onto the torso that we've already created. And the elbow should be just a little bit below the rib cage. So I'm going to find that spot and cut it. We'll roll this over into a normal cylinder. And there we have the upper arm. For the lower arm, we're just going to take the piece that we had cut off and we'll measure about 12 inches from one end. And that's where we're going to cut it. We're going to connect this together as a tapered cylinder. So we'll take one end, this is the elbow end, and we'll just connect the end together right where the edges meet. And the opposite end, we're going to overlap so that it makes a smaller circle. This is for the wrist. And now you can see we have kind of a cone shape, and it looks like a forearm. So here we can kind of lay them out. Now the upper arms look really long at this point, but that's okay. To make the hands, I'm going to take a piece of wire that's a little bit longer than my hand, just fold it over and cut it to shape and then wire it together. Uh, we are not going to try to get extreme detail in the hands, so we're just going to kind of make flat hands uh, where we don't see the fingers themselves. To make the top shape, we're just going to fold over the corners. And this will kind of round them off and give them more of a, a hand shape. There we are, two hands. Now let's make the pelvis. I'm going to use a piece that's about three and a half feet by 12 inches. And we're going to roll it into a tapered cylinder like we did with the rib cage. And this is actually going to fit opposite the rib cage, where the rib cage tapers down into the waist. The pelvis will taper skinny at the waist and go bigger at the bottom of the pelvis. And now we've got a torso without arms. So let's get the arms on there. I'm going to start by kind of test fitting where I want the arms to be. And then I'm going to cut the top of the shoulder at an angle so that it'll fit well against the body. I'm going to hold the hand in place temporarily to help me decide where the elbow should be. I'm going to cut that to an angle also so that the upper arm will kind of look like a trapezoid if you look at it from the side. Now we'll connect the hand onto the lower arm and wire everything together. So we've got both arms here, but they're just hanging loose other than at the shoulder. So I'm gonna position the hands right at the waist. I want it to look like she's holding something. And then we'll just wire the hands to the belly. Now let's work on the skirt. I'm going to start by cutting two strips that are about 12 to 14 inches by 3 feet. Ultimately, we're going to need six of these strips, but these are the first two. These are going to be the panels for the front and back of the skirt. So we're just going to put one on the pelvis right in the front. And it's really hard to see, but I'm, I'm trying to show it here. We'll connect the other one on the back so you can see there's a big gap between them. It's hard to see what's happening with the chicken wire, so let me show it to you with the paper. So this is the torso, and these are the rectangular panels that we're cutting. The first two panels are connected on the front and back of the torso. Now we're going to put the side ones on. As we add the next two on, we're not going to put them evenly. What we're going to do is line the front edge up so that it overlaps the front just a little, and it overlaps the back significantly. And then we're going to cut a little line just a few inches down, about eight inches down. And you can see as we make them overlap, it will cause 
panel to kind of bump out. This will allow us to make the dress billow out and get bigger as it goes down. You'll see now the back one lines directly up with the edge. So we'll do the same thing here. We've got this lined up just two inches over the front and this big part will overlap the back. And here I've, I'm gonna cut right down the middle. And then overlap the piece over just like I did with the paper. And then just wire those together. To get even more billowing, right here in the back where the two pieces meet, we're going to overlap our fifth and sixth pieces, one on each side. At the top, at the waist, we're going to overlap them equally. But then down at the bottom, we're going to pull it open so that just the corners touch. You can kind of see how it overlaps. There's a V shape underneath. You can see through the paper. Now that that's all wired up, let's look at the bottom. There is a lot of this extra unevenness around the bottom edge. We're gonna make that even by just grabbing it and folding it up under to make a hem. Folding over a hem like this adds strength to it and helps keep the skirt billowed out. It also makes it be able to stand up on its own. And here you can see her whole shape. And you can even see on this video how difficult it is to see her exactly because she's so transparent. That's what makes these so great. It doesn't have to be beautifully folded over. In fact, we leave it kind of thick as it rolls over. Now for some finishing touches. For the hair, I'm just taking a, a rectangle and folding it over top of her head and wiring it together. I want her silhouette to be a little bit more feminine. Uh, she's fairly flat chested, so I'm just going to take a small rectangle here. Just using my hands, I'm just going to give it a simple bend like that. Now we'll just attach it onto her chest and we're done. Let's see how she turned out. So there you see the chicken wire ghost. Isn't it neat how you can just see right through her but you can still feel her silhouette? And you can see it's not actually too complicated. It's just rolling up a bunch of cylinders and wiring them together. I think the effect is so great. It's totally worth taking the time to do it if you have the patience. I really had a lot of fun making this chicken wire ghost. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up so that uh, YouTube can tell other people that this video is worth watching. And uh, if you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe. Hit the notification bell if that's the way you do things. And until next time, don't be bored. Be creative.